Hey, BK here. Uh, it's been a while. Um, a lot's changed since I last did a vlog. In fact, the previous vlog that I put up on BK Understanding's YouTube channel uh, was recorded way back in November, the end of November, I believe. Um, check the date on it if you're that curious. Uh, it is posted under there. Uh, recorded on date or whatever, but I believe it's the end of November. And, uh... Anyway, uh, I'll get to the reasons why it's been a while uh, in a minute. But today, I wanted to go ahead and shoot one. I took a personal day off from my full-time job, um, you know, my 9 to 5, if you will, to uh, prepare for a show I'm going to be doing tomorrow. And the show tomorrow is celebrating today. And today is April 22nd, 2022. It's the five-year anniversary of BK and the Understanding. So five years ago, uh, my friend JR, um, who has appeared on Basil Keystones and a few of the singles, I don't think he made it on Beginning Kernels. I think that was straight me and Tim. But uh, for sure he's on Basil Keystones and some of the singles. But JR and I launched BK Understanding um, in 2017 at Slim Pickens Outfitters Grand Opening on April 22nd, 2017. And they just celebrated their five years uh, of establishment uh, last month, but their grand opening was the month after they had opened. So they did a soft opening in March of 2017, and then they did a grand opening on April 22nd, 2017. And JR and I played there, and that was the first uh, appearance of BK and the Understanding officially. So we considered April 22nd to be our anniversary. Um, I did used to play before that with the intention of launching BK and Understanding. And I just played by BK in my last name or just BK. And played with some people uh, I used to go to church with. Um, I have left that place uh, realizing that it had either always been or devolved into a cult. And saw how unhealthy it was in my life. So sadly, the people I used to play with back in those days have shunned me and no longer want anything to do with me and cut me out of their lives. Uh, really sad because they all took, they were great, I believe they were great friends at the time. It was really a really hard loss and talented musicians. But uh, JR came along, came back into my life, and JR is a phenomenal musician, uh, talent. Just, I don't know, he just sweats talent musically, in my opinion. Uh, he came back in my life, and then a former student of mine, Tim Paul Rugg, who uh, is the full-time drummer for Backacre. You should check them out, an Arlington band, Arlington, Texas band, really talented band. Um, they're doing really well right now. They're picking up some steam. Uh, but anyway, Tim Paul Rugg, is, uh, I taught him my first year of teaching when I was a high school English teacher. And uh, I was his senior teacher for the second half of his school year. And uh, he agreed to play a show at the Curtain Club in Dallas with me. So he had become a member of Beacon Understanding for, uh, and it's kind of questionable if he isn't right now. Not because he's been kicked out or because he doesn't want to play with us, but because Backacre has gotten so busy and he and his wife had twins and his life's real busy. So um, I am seeking, you know, if you're a drummer in the uh, Dallas-Fort Worth area, uh, check out our music if you haven't yet. And if that's something you think you could jump on board with, um, I, I would love to have someone who could dedicate more time to begin understanding and be more helpful to me. Uh, and again, nothing gets Tim. Tim's just really busy in a good way. It's a good problem for him. His other band's doing really well, and uh, so he's playing with them more. That being said, anyway, today is the five-year anniversary of Beacon Understanding, so I wanted to make a short little video to, to, to mention that. So I, here's the flyers I just picked up. I'm going to show you uh, where I live now. A little printing shop made this. I made the flyer actually. Uh, everything on it except for the Slim Pickens Outfitters logo, which I believe Harrison made of Slim and Harry's. It's Jamaica's brother-in-law. And then I, these silhouettes are taken from photographs uh, that I found on the internet. Here's of uh, uh, recent uh, the Slim Pickens, the Dawes family who owns Slim Pickens Outfitters. I'm gonna guess Harrison took the, that photo, but I used it and made a silhouette. And then here's one that Aaron. Uh, made, uh, took of JR and I years ago, made, and I turned it into a silhouette. 
And then there's this one. Aaron also took this at the Curtain Club show in Dallas. I turned it into a silhouette for this. But everything else I made on here, um, except for those items. So I made this flyer here. So tomorrow I'll be playing at Slim Pickens Outfitters in Steamville, Texas to celebrate our five year anniversary. JR may come, I'm not sure yet. Um, if he can, that'd be cool. He'll play a little bit for it with me. Um, and uh, I'm gonna play three sets from three to six p.m. Um, can't see if I, oh, I did, okay. So I'm gonna be playing three sets. Uh, the first set, I'm gonna honor every, some songs I wrote uh, that predate Beacon Understanding, and I published them under uh, The Beacon Kid, and those are songs of adoration, worship, or praise, or inspiration, having to do with uh, my faith in Christ. So they're really intended for people of faith who believe the gospel of Christ to listen to and have their own spiritual experiences with and inspire that. So I published those under The Beacon Kid, um, that anything I publish on the Beacon Kid is specifically faith related. So I'm going to start, I'm going to play some of those songs. They're the first songs I ever wrote. So even though I don't publish them under the, uh, the uh, Beacon Understanding, and I don't typically play them as Beacon Understanding anymore, um, they did pave the way for Beacon Understanding. So I'm going to start off, I'll play a set of those, um, and then I'll do a set of the do-it-yourself era, I call it, of Beacon Understanding. And it's the songs that appear on Beginning Kernels and Basal Keystones. Um, the first songs I wrote for Beacon Understanding and published under that uh, that band name. And I call it coffee house music, singer-songwriter music. I mean, I, it's hard to classify what genre in today's music it fits into. It's just generally singer-songwriter music, so whatever the song called for that's how it was decorated. Um, and then I'll do a third set, and that will take the, the parts of the Basil Keystones album that were more rock-oriented, and it'll start off with those, and then it's going to go into uh, the stuff you haven't heard yet the, from the studio album that Peter Waringa of uh, Siberian Traps and Denver Williams and the Gas Money. Uh, he's the drummer and the sound engineer and the producer of their music. Uh, if you will. I could be, I don't know, I don't know, producer, I think. Uh, but definitely sound engineer and uh, mixer on those projects, sometimes master, if you will. Anyway, Peter Wieringa uh, and I went in the studio, the Cove Studios in Arlington, Texas, uh, under the supervision of Owen Donovan, who also recorded bass for all the songs on the, this project. A really good bass player. Uh, so anyway, so Peter helped me record these songs I wrote, and um, that album right now, I'm overall the overall project I'm calling the Dragonkult, which comes from Swedish um, or Bedragonkult. Um, and anyway, I wrote those songs over the summer um, after I left my hometown and moved into the Dallas-Fort Worth metropolitan area, and uh, Peter helped me bring those to life. He played drums on them. Um, again, Tim had just had uh, newborn twins and was getting busier with that and Backacre. And uh, an opportunity to record in the Cove Studios that I couldn't pass up came up. And it was during the weekdays where Tim would be busy anyway. So Peter offered to play drums on this album. So Peter's on that album, a phenomenal drummer. And uh, Owen Donovan is on the album, fantastic bass player and really brought some life to some of the songs that I didn't know what to do with yet. Uh, so much so I cried at the end of the, the project and hugged his neck and told him thank you. And uh, anyway, um, and JR is starting to add to it as he can. He's He's been busy too, but he's he's adding what he can. And I continue to add to them in the meantime too. But anyway, uh, play. I'm going to be playing songs from that in the third set. So I'll, the third set will be some of the more rock-oriented songs on basal keystones. A couple you haven't heard yet that are supposed to come out on a third do-it-yourself album I haven't finished mixing mastering yet called Burning Kindling. Um, one of them's called The Cougar Blues. Pretty funny song. I have played that once or twice live. Put that on the set list. Um, and then I'm going to play some of the new songs from the studio albums. So I called that set list Beacon Understanding Then and Now. Uh, then referring to the do-it-yourself era and then the transition into the studio album era, which Bed the Rog and Kult will be the first 
professional studio album that we can't understand is done. So I am eager to share that with you. Anyway, but again, today is the uh, five-year anniversary. Um, I mostly wanted to say that. It looks like we're at 10 minutes right now. So um, I, I had mentioned some things have changed um, real quickly before I end this, this little video. Some things that have changed. Um, you know, Beacon Understanding has not made enough money for me to make a living off of it. Um, in fact, to be blunt, Bandcamp is the main way to support us financially, like concerning if you feel like I want to support Beacon Understanding, I'd like to buy their albums. Up to this point, Bandcamp is the way to go because we get 80 over 80% of the whatever you pay. And the full albums, that's the only place you can get the full albums and singles is on our Bandcamp page. But so far, Basil Keystones, which to date is the best album I've put out, only two people have bought it off Bandcamp. It was, re it was really discouraging. A lot more people bought Beginning Kernels and it's not as good of an album. Much rougher. And, but only two people bought uh, Basil Keystones on Bandcamp. Now, a lot of it has to do with marketing and stuff. I don't have the resources. I, I can only do so much by myself. So again, I would uh, cry out for help if you are a music promoter, if you are a booking agent. Those are things I need help with. Um, if you want to help in other ways, if you're good at uh, editing vlogs and you need to get the experience, I can't afford to pay you at the moment, but if you want to help out, I mean, if you want to, and, and get some proof of, uh, of what you can do uh, and put on your resume for your future, man, I would, I'd love help. Um, if you can get us more shows in the Dallas-Fort Worth area or even the Waco area, those are areas I like to play at. You can do it. I mean, reach out to me, please. Uh, and then in the previous vlog, I put my email up. I'm not going to do that today just because I'm going to be busy. But go back to that vlog and look for my email. Email me. Um, but I, I could use more help. I focus on the songwriting and making the music. And the catch is that that means that I haven't been able to uh, monetize efficiently the work I've done. But I believe in the work I've done. Even though only two people bought Basil Keystones, I'm proud of that album. I did that by myself, essentially. Not not literally all, but essentially I made that by myself um, and Beginning Kernels, essentially by myself. Tim mixed, he did drums, he mixed and mastered some of it. I ended up co-mastering Basil Keystones um, just for efficiency's sake, to get them the way I liked as much as I could. And some of the problems we were running into weren't his fault. They were, they were because of me not knowing how to record. But anyway, essentially I did those on my own. I'm proud of both of them, but especially Basil Keystones. And But I'm going to be real proud of what comes out after because uh, it's going to keep getting better. But I believe strongly in the music I'm making. I'm going to keep making it. Um, but I could use help with other parts of the music thing. So I have taken a full-time 9-to-5 job again. And I enjoy it. It's, it's, it's a good job and I don't it doesn't kill me. It's not like teaching where I just want to die. I'm depressed and on the verge of mental health issues um, that, you know, I don't know how people, other than never realizing how bad it is, do it. I would, any teachers watching this, I'd advise you to quit teaching, honestly, get out of public education. It's not good for you. It's not good for the American children. It's just a toxic environment, and it's not, it's hard for kids to get a good education in, in today's public education system. Honestly, it is. Um, in America because it's just so superficial so superficial and it abuses the teachers uh, just constantly they're so overexploited. anyway that being said um, you know my new job is nothing like that so I still have energy to work on stuff in the evenings but I'm then I'm limited on the amount of time I can dedicate to things so it does prolong how long it takes me to do stuff so I could use help but anyway, um, yeah, my full-time job is a technical writer, and so I am making money again, I'm trying to save up as much as I can, because I lost a lot of money over the past few years uh, making these BK and Understanding albums. I mean, just being open and honest there. But again, it's the five-year anniversary. BK and Understanding is something I'm proud of. It is, you know, uh, the music's very important to me. I, I've give, given up a lot to share these songs that I believe in. And just wait till you hear what's coming out. It's just going to keep getting better. And I hope it finds its audience. I hope more and more people tune in. 
um, right now, if you can spare money, go to our Bandcamp page, buy our music. I mean, streaming services do not pay us. Like, they pay, like, less than a tenth of a cent per stream, per song. Like, at less than a tenth of a penny. That doesn't add up, you know? Even people who are having millions of streams, they're getting ripped off. Um, they might be making a little more money than people like me because of the way that uh, the record industry went in and infiltrated the streaming service system and made sure that they were going to get their cut. So maybe people on record labels are doing better. But it's awful. It's awful. I, as, a, as a musician, I hate streaming services because they exploit us so badly. Um, but as a, as a um, consumer of music, I get it. You know, they've made things affordable for us. And we have like endless, uh, you know, availability. Like it's anything you want to listen to, it's easily accessible. I get it. But if you want to support Beacon Understanding, if you want it to grow, uh, please go to our Bandcamp page, uh, bkunderstanding.bandcamp.com. And Beacon Understanding is all one word, .bandcamp.com. Go there and buy our music. Buy it all at once, you'll get a discount. I don't remember off the top of my head, I want to say it's somewhere between 10 and 20% off. Go there and buy our music. I mean, more than two people, please buy Basil Keystones. That's the best album we've put out so far. Again, we've got two more coming, and each one of them will be better. But right now, Basil Keystones is the best one we put out. And then the concerning singles, uh, The Kingdom is Cyan, Magenta, and Yellow. That I think that turned out phenomenally. And that one I did make entirely by myself. Um, that's a great single. Go check that out. It's very inspirational. touches... That one really hits the roots of my spirituality, and, and uh, honestly, uh, that one, that single. Go check those things out. Go, go support us. Buy that. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like our videos. Don't, don't just show up to troll us and dislike us. Now, if you're someone who hasn't, isn't involved, and you, this pops up in your honest opinions, I don't like it, that's fine. That's, you're telling YouTube, I, don't, I didn't like this. Don't show me more. I get that. That's fine. That's going to happen. But if you're a friend or a fan of Begin Understanding or someone keeping up Begin Understanding um, from our communities or from the United States or, you know, someone who can relate to it, uh, man, show some support, like the videos, um, subscribe to the channel, things like that will help. Even if you do buy our music on Bandcamp, then choose whatever streaming service you want to and listen to it as much as you can take it. Any, all that stuff helps. But... Uh, more things are coming. If you can make the show tomorrow, uh, April 23rd, uh, I will have t-shirts for sale. And I should have grabbed those. I didn't, and I need to end this video, but uh, they are what I call the Gigfoot tees. Uh, you can go to our Instagram and see those. Uh, they're posted there, made by another former student of mine named Eva, under her business name, Strawberry Milkweed. Um, really talented girl, and they're hand-pressed by her. I'm going to be selling those. I'll be selling these flyers that I showed you that I made and had printed off today. Um, I'm going to be selling those. And I plan to uh, soon order physical media to sell at shows uh, as soon as I can uh, justify spending that money. I've been using my resources on other things like more equipment that I need for the music and the, the stuff. But anyway, um, yeah, if you're going to be around Steve Mill tomorrow, come check out our show. It's our five-year anniversary. So thanks for tuning in. Appreciate you guys who are supportive and who watch this and enjoy it and who can show up to the shows and, and any way you can. Uh, I hope to share more news with you soon. And I hope to make a couple more vlogs about my do-it-yourself uh, pedal board and share those with you to finish that, which I had started in November. <laughs> finish that and then I have some footage from Slim Pickens five year anniversary show featuring Between Silence I'll, I hope to put up uh, at following that uh, featuring Adam Jeffers really talented guy who does uh, instrumental ambi I call it ambient rock I think he calls it post progressive something yada yada I don't know post post alternate I don't remember what he calls it um, anyway it's kind of like explosions of sky type music but uh Really talented guy between silence. Uh, I'll have some footage of that and just in the store from that day. I'll share that with you. And then I'll be filming tomorrow's show, getting footage of that, and I'll share that stuff as, as with you as much as I can, uh, as soon as I can. But again, I'm, having, I'm doing everything right now. So be patient. I'll get it to you as soon as I can. And again, appreciate you guys. Stay tuned. Until next time. Thanks.